Shout out to Amp Studios for creating the resource and the space for us to be here. Let's give it up to them. And a very big thank you to MTN as well for backing this initiative, for backing a space for communities to be built, for artists to have a space to create, to interact, to connect. So thank you so much, MTN. Give it up for MTN. <laughs> so to open up the conversation, I would say, Martha, as a DJ slash label manager, what is it that you find is, you know, the most interesting part of your job? And why is it interesting? And how do you feel people can benefit from, you know, the knowledge that you have as a label manager and someone who, who actually handles the music? How many of you believe that your music is your currency? Right? So how you distribute it and how you make uh, money out of it is very important, right? So basically my role as a label manager at Paradise uh, Worldwide, um, so we help artists and record labels distribute their music, right? But the different thing about us is we actually engage. So basically we are for independent artists, right? So we already know that as an independent artist or independent record label, it's hard, guys. <laughs> it's hard to get to where you want to get to. So we are like your hand, you know? So you bring your hand to the party and we bring the other hand and we work together to create revenue for you. I started my music journey early 2019. As an independent artist, I did not know really much uh, about what to do if I'm going to release my first record. Our organization, right, helps you in that sense, but you also have to have that caliber. So you also need to bring in the work. Like I said, your music is your currency. So we help you with things like your release strategies. But it's not just about me distributing the music. No, your strategy needs to make you money. At the end of the day, your music is a business guys, your music is a business. As much as you want to keep your brand and push who you are, music is a business. So as I'm sitting here today, I thought, okay, I produce a song, it's ready, it's mastered, uh, I'll release it next week. No, you have to be like four to six weeks uh, prepared. So these are the type of touch points that we guide you with as a label, but you also have to have that profile of showing that, you know what, this is what I've done, this is what I've built. Sometimes people expect a distributor to do what a label does, and those are actually very different things, right? So a distributor is basically an organization that assists you in putting your music onto digital streaming platforms. A distributor treats an artist like a label. So you come as a business to a distributor, what does your business have? Your currency, your product, which is your music. Now, in order for you to get your music out, there's obviously steps you need to follow, like having your artwork, having your music mixed and mastered, thinking about the music, and then you take it to a distributor and you say, okay, cool, this is my, you know, this is my plan, I need direction, or maybe you do do research and you're like, okay, cool, this, these are the type of playlists I'd like to be on, these are the type of people I'd like to reach, how do you help me get there? So, on that note, we're actually gonna go to, over to Reggie. By the show of hands, can I see who's an artist in the room, like a musician, an artist? Okay, um, so in my experience, a lot of times I interact or engage with artists whenever I mention the word marketing, like they have daunted faces, they just like, yo, marketing, marketing. But if anything, that's what's gonna actually elevate not just like your music um, being listened to more people, but it's also, it also elevates your brand. So branding is, is, is a very important tool. So as an artist, you need to be sure of firstly what your brand is and who your brand appeals to. 
So in terms of so different social media platforms, how I always advise or like give a tip on is like always know also like, cause you have different fans or followers on different social medias and they're following you for different reasons. Not all of them are following you for your music. So sometimes you need to sit as an artist and be like, okay, cool. On Instagram, I have these type of followers um, and they're following me for this. How can I incorporate what they're following me for with my music? For instance, if they're following you on Instagram cause you're a pretty boy, use that to your advantage. Like for instance, if you're dropping, put a story with your link there because you know like they will always engage with your, like, your pretty boyness. Or if you are, for instance, a dancer, you know, that's something you can incorporate to your music as well. You create um, content around what you do as well, which is dancing. TikTok actually is where it's at because you can create a video and it could go viral and that video could actually like enhance how um, your, 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 your artists or I mean your, your followers engage with you. There's also something that we call a marketing um, um, funnel, right? So basically a marketing funnel is a measure in terms of how um, you engage with your audiences from the moment they find out about you to the moment they either stay with you or not. So you need to sit down as an artist and be like, okay, what other things can I use to attract fans um, apart from my music. Your music should also like speak um, for itself so that once you use whatever attraction you're using to gain um, the fans, your music must also speak well for itself so that the fan can also like be able to engage with it. I've also recognized that like a lot of other artists, once they start getting a little bit of clout or, or, or like if they start getting a little bit of numbers, they stop like engaging with their fans and stuff like that. And if anything, that increases like your um, your visibility online, that increases, like once you start engaging with your fans, like already like you, it's, it's very easy for them, for you to convert them to not just a social media fan, but an actual fan of your music. So basically from engaging with them, for instance, if you have a new follower and they are commenting on some of your posts, um, you can you can engage with them, you know, reply to them, whatever, and then also re respond to your DMs as well. After they have, you have converted them to a fan, what other enticing things are you doing? Like for instance, you're creating a new cover art and then you put it up on your story and you're like, hey guys, I have four different cover arts, please help me decide which one I must use. And then the fans that have voted, then you, you, you send them a DM, you're like, hey, um, you will receive a, a free cover art if you download this track or if you pre-save my, um, my album, my EP, my single, whatever the case may be. So you have, you're delighting them because they're like, oh my gosh, Namakausta is engaging with me. Like, Fans actually really like that. Then the last one is retain. Now this is now making sure that they become a long-term fan. For all the other like um, future plans or projects that you're coming, you already know that you have a fan base that will engage with that. And that engagement works like the domino effect. That journey of a person kind of stumbling upon your music is an opportunity for you to showcase your, who you are, showcase your art, showcase your message. And I think sometimes it's even hard to find your voice, but the only way for you to kind of discover your voice and what art you want to put out is by making it. On that note, I want to hop on to ask you, as a person who, has sta who started as an artist and who's also just a lover of music, now you're in the space of where you've set up a label. What has your journey been like? you need to start now you know like um, y you might feel like now i'm starting at zero followers or i'm starting at this but the sooner you start the better you can you can grow and um, so i started with a, a remix um, that i approached a label for um, send them a, an email like guys can i do a remix for you and like kind of from there i started doing releases on google music on like, other international labels and um the journey has been like up and down, you know, and I, it's something that I really want to share with you guys that you guys are going to struggle, you know, like you have to at least accept that this thing is going to be tough, right? So now all you just need to do is figure out how can I move, uh, you know, um, become an artist while being able to live? Because that's another thing that's difficult, right? Like how do I live a life, pay bills while... I don't have streams while I don't have following. So kind of like everybody has got their own vibe. You kind of need to figure out for yourself what is the best way to go about it. And I'll share my story is that I started working. Well, I studied sound engineering and I um, started to get a, a job uh, in a TV station. Um, and that kind of allowed me to pay bills 
And once I came back from work, I would do music. And that was my life every day for about 10 years, you know, working in the morning, come back from work, do some music. And it kind of allowed me to be firstly be free because um, I then didn't need to worry about rent, about food. And it's a lot of struggles that a lot of artists go through. And you don't need to do it my way, uh, but you kind of need to find your own way that you want to do it. And I'm pointing this out because a lot of the way we've lost a lot of great artists without even realizing their potential. And it's mainly because of the realities of life. Like, how do I actually stay an artist and still make a living, you know? And, and it's a tough journey. I really do totally agree with you. Um, I have a similar journey where I had just dropped out of university and I was like, okay, I'm going in. I'm a musician. And I think I had the American dream in my head. I'm like, yo, I'm going to be singing at Pick and Pay and someone's going to discover me or I'm going to put out my first song on SoundCloud. It's a certified banger. Obviously, I, I, I believe in myself. I'm like, you know, I put out my first song on SoundCloud. I was like, where's the fame at? Like, you know what I mean? Um, and I used to also very much like you doing the groundwork, like how everyone is out here, like, you know, coming to sit and engage with people who are in the entertainment industry and hearing hard truths like, you need to get a job. I'm like, no, but I'm a star. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> you know? And I think that mentality needs to shift because of the reality and the context of living in South Africa as a young person. Basically, uh, an artist who has work or side hustle, or, uh, let's say music is your main goal, right? And then you, you get a job, that's your side hustle. That's, that's how I always frame it in my mind. But essentially, when you are doing that, you are financing your career. The same thing you want a, a major uh, record label to do to give you an advance you're basically, they're putting you on their payroll. So it's either you're getting it, you're knocking on doors and you're getting an advance and you're going to work it off with all these clauses that you may not even understand, you may not even have a lawyer, or you have a job and you finance your career and you build enough leverage. When someone approaches you, you're like, actually, I can't afford to actually get um, help from a lawyer because I actually have work. If I'm going to take this advance, it has to make sense. You know, so these are the things that I call this paying your dues. I've always been a great believer of never having one in, like stream of income. For instance, when I was in varsity still studying, you're a student, you're broke. So my bursary was giving me an allowance. But then I didn't tell my dad that the bursary is giving me an allowance so that he gives me a monthly allowance. So I had the monthly allowance for my dad and the bursary. On top of that, I was like a well-known promoter on campus. I'd be that guy on campus selling you tap water and make it make it sell you know from that um student village discovered that oh not only is he a great promoter he's studying it they created a position for me in like in their company so before i graduated i already had a job so while i was in corporate during the day i'm i'm an it technician at night i was an event host i was hosting at nightclubs after that then i had my creative phase whereby now i'm an actor i'm like pushing like my acting career but then on top of that i'm also a writer and i make money from that you know so i've always be been a great believer of like having more than two streams of income the most important thing for everyone here is like to have that uh, self awareness of what am I good at? What am I willing to do? What else can I do? Like the same thing that um, you, would, uh, Reggie, was saying, like when I'm doing a social media thing, um, what else am I good at that maybe it's aside from my music, you know, that I could use to kind of pull, pull, pull people in? And um, some, sometimes somebody here or a few people here are so dope that they don't need to do what we did. You know, like you just like super dope that you can easily make money, whether it's like writing for people, making beats for people, while growing to become an artist yourself. So I think it's more important to kind of have a, an open-mindedness towards this, but most importantly to have a, a self-awareness of 
who you are, what you want to do. You know, attending these um, platforms actually grows your network. For example, how I even got to Paradise is by attending platforms like Africa Rising Music Conference, where I met the opportunity to actually, you know, go and attend a Building Breaches program with Namakao. You just have to touch and go, and consistency, guys, consistency. I know it's very hard, but consistency, not, nothing beats consistency. How's everybody feeling? Who's gonna be releasing music soon? Hey now, who just dropped? Yes, congratulations for dropping the music! It's very important, right? It's very important to make sure you drop the music but do it the right way. So from a label manager point of view, it's important to invest in your strategy, right? So invest your time, work with your networks, you know, so plan your strategies four to six weeks ahead. Please stick it in your mind. Research the perfect strategies that work according to your target audience, according to your market, and stay authentic. Like we live in a digital world, so if, even how you market yourself, it has to bode well with like being on digital platforms. So there's something that I call the four E's, and the first one is experience. So instead of just focusing on a product, for instance, like your single, create an ex entire experience around it. Like if you're gonna drop an EP, like do something like um, a young going to Pretoria to create a listening session or something, like make it an experience. Don't just drop music and be like, hey, please listen to my music. That's a bit boring. Number two, exchange. So instead of focusing solely on monetization, consider how you can create value and help fans feel more connected to what they're buying. The third one is every place. So think digitally and globally. Like never just be like, okay, cool, my, my music is just gonna appeal to the South African audience or the Bhutori audience. No, think globally. Because like, look at us now, South Africa is a sensation like to the world. Then the fourth one is evangelism. So word of mouth. Word of mouth also still works. Let your passion shine through your music. Like go to platforms like these, you know, engage, network, go to shows, go to concerts, go support someone else. I know not all of us are extroverts. There's some very introverted musicians, but you have to get yourself out there. Go and like engage with other musicians that could create an opportunity for you to collaborate with someone else, you know, collaborate with a bigger artist who can give you a new like listenership or a new fan base, whatever the case may be. So just also as an artist, be proactive. Okay, we're opening the floor for questions. Who has a question? What would be like the best way to actually be understood by the people here in terms of with me speaking a lot of languages that are not understood by them? and seeing me as a person showing off? Um, I think that every artist wants to be heard, you know, at the end of the day. But like, what I see with a lot of young people, myself included, when I was like much younger, I felt like everything that I did, everybody needs to hear. But like, sometimes it takes time, you know, like, I still feel like not that many people know my music, you know, and, and I've been in the game for such a long time. I just think that, with time, the longer you stay in the game and the longer you remain authentic, and it doesn't matter the language really, it's like, it's just about the time thing and attracting the right people. The right people will always be attracted to what you do, you know, um, then it just becomes how long are you doing it for staying in the game, that's it, bro. Yeah, I have a, another, just to add to your point, I think also it's really, actually really important to recognize that your music won't be for everyone, not to shoot you down, but more to give you a, a clear understanding of the people who are into your music will gravitate to your music and it's basically like finding a tribe. So I think like, you know, having that like, I wanna have that reach, you have that reach, but there are even people who don't like Jay-Z, you know what I mean? Like you will not be for everyone and that is 100% okay. Oh, my name is Newcomer and my question is, so the most difficult part for most independent artists is getting on big Spotify playlists. The question is, how do we get onto those playlists? Thank you. <laughs> I think this is one of my favorite questions, right? You need to first know that getting a playlist is not definite, right? But you need to prepare 
your stretch strategies. That's why I say it's important for you to prepare your music or ingest your music into the back end of your distributor four to six weeks before. If you are going to speech, uh, pitch for platforms like Spotify and Apple, right? You are selling yourself to them, right? So you must tell them why must they put you in the ed editorial playlist, right? So when I go to your social media profile, is it on par? Is it according to the branding that uh, Reggie has stated, right? If I go to my profile on um, Spotify or Apple, do I have a picture from 10 years ago or do I have a picture that is current? Your profile must be inviting. So it must, it must interlink. So it's, it's like a whole cycle. If my social media is okay and my Spotify for artists Apple for artists is, is proper, is neat, it's on par, then chances are that you are going to get into the uh, playlist. You know, I've seen artists with only like 250 monthly listeners or 500 followers get into, onto those playlists because they understood how the whole cycle works. So it's how you sell yourself to the brand. And it's important, for example, if you go onto Spotify they, uh, for artists, they do give you instructions. Read. It's very important to read, guys. Don't research is very important. So those are my those are the pointers that I can give you that prepare four to six weeks before. Because then when you pitch your music, curators sit on a board and they check, okay, this person is actually having a show, a listening session to promote this. So they can actually bring me money, you know? At the end of the day, they want what? Revenue. I'm really re-emphasizing the importance of social media. Guys, make sure your social media is proper. I'm currently like working with an international festival. I'm part of the panel to decide who's gonna be on the lineups. I can't mention names yet. But however, when they send me the list, they send me the, the, the artist name, technical writers, social media, their bio. Some artists, like when you, if I Google, okay, this artist, there's no bio. So what's the next thing that I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go to their social media to see what's up. So if your social, if like if I go to your social media, I go back to those five things I mentioned. What attracted me to it? If I don't see anything that's that's attract, I'm going through 500 applications. If nothing is attracting me, I'm moving next, literally. And then now that defeats the purpose because that one that I press next, his music would probably be amazing for that festival. But why? Because their branding is not on par. I just moved. So it's very important. Just stop talking about rugby and Kaiser Chiefs losing. And then like when somebody checks out your social media you've got like i'm a boko boko you know and stuff like that i mean like it's cool right like put it in your stories after 24 hours it's gone but like really guys have what you do on your social media so my question is i manage artists and they work all the time they always at work so my question is how do i actually position them or should i say make them and put them out there with these hint, uh, with these problems of them working all the time because they are an, an amazing artist right so yeah so social media allows you like it gives you like different features that can help you for instance as, a, as an artist that goes to work as a as a nine to five right so firstly there's things like scheduling posts that's gonna like keep you like if you're too busy that you can't even be on your social media and you don't have money to pay someone to do it for you you can do things like scheduling posts then you know at a certain time this post is gonna be up also keep track of your analytics your analytics show you like who's engaging with your content who where are they from and whatever so then you use that to make sure that the content that you're gonna produce is boding well with that invest in your music i mean if you're earning some money like Get a social media manager that you know you can afford to help you with that. Or if like your 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 the artist manager is not doing that, get someone that can dollar that. You know, it really is gonna come back to you and it's gonna be a benefit. Is it advisable for an upcoming artist or an independent artist to drop a full body length, like a whole body of work, like a full EP, like should we drop singles? What's the best strategy? I to love this question. <laughs> um, independent artists, upcoming artists, remember you're trying to engage activity and create followers, right? And, and build your profiles on the DSPs. So it's important if you have a full body of EP, it's always um, advisable to drop it in singles, right? 
leading towards the full EP. That way you know you're making um, revenue with a single, building up to the next uh, uh, full EP. So we always advise, always four to six weeks before. Yes, singles are important. Singles, basically sit with the music, sit with the music, and what is the song, that one song that tells the best version of the full body? You know, it's a prelude to someone either discovering you, maybe your supporters to get them excited. I don't believe in dropping full bodies at once. I don't think we, we because, you know, in this content-hungry hun world, it's important to say, okay, cool, if you do a six-track uh, six project, two to three singles drop, then it's a build up to the main body of work. That's also what you know Spotify wants, that's what Apple wants. You're basically driving traffic or driving people to their platform when you release singles. And I always say to artists, if you can't market a single, you can't market a full body of work. So you need to test the theory with smaller pieces of the music to say, okay, cool, maybe I should take QR codes to my next show. Maybe that will get people to pre-save. Okay, cool, maybe I should start a WhatsApp group. So these are things that you should think about with the singles so that when the full body of work comes, you already know what works. You've already created a formula for yourself to have like success. Okay, next question. What is publishing and when is the right time to start thinking about that? Basically, if I were to explain it the way I understand it, is that um, a publisher is someone or an entity that will look after your music in a sense of royalties based on how much your music has been used. So remember like places like radio, as an example, when if radio plays your music based on how much music they played in a particular month and how much revenue um, they got from different sources like adverts and stuff like that, they kind of have to submit to um, an organization like Samro uh, and Sampra um, of how much music they used. So for example, let's say Metro FM played 100 songs in a month and in those 100 songs, yours was one of those songs and maybe yours was played twice and Beyonce's song was, was played 98 times. Um, so at the end of the month, when, when Metro FM does a recon to Samro, they will say, we played this, these songs, this is the song that we played X amount of times, and based on our revenue, this is the money that we are giving and allocating to music usage. And then from there, uh, Samro will take what due to you and pay to your publisher. So usually in the case of independent artists, or if you didn't sign a publishing deal, you are your own publisher. Um, there's different publishing houses also available who uh, render services of publishing. So if you sign to, let's say, Sony Music Africa Publishing, they, they will <coughs> take care of your money from Sambro and so forth. But also like publishers, what, what I've seen them do um, recently, or not recently, but uh, established publishers would also pitch your music to films like TV, Netflix um, series and stuff like that. And if your, if your songs uh, or your music is used in those platforms, you'll get a certain fee. Um, and uh, what I've heard is that uh, that fee is quite, quite a nice one if you get your music into film. But yeah, it's something for you guys to look up to. Um, yeah, so for example, I do my own publishing because I figured that I don't have that uh, big of a catalog that I need somebody to look after so I can kind of chase funds on my own when I, w I spend about maybe like two days in a year uh, doing that, kind of actively chasing and looking where my music has been used. And if you did have a publisher, they would do that on your behalf and give you what's due to you. I hope I answered your question. Oh, thank you so much for the session. Everybody, please give yourself a big round of applause. Surrender, 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 surrender.